Hey guys, welcome to this presentation. This is Kurt the Consultant, and today I want to share with you a really cool case study with one of my clients who is programming a RDC tire pressure control module on a 2011 BMW E90. Now the main reason I wanted to share this particular case study is to not only make people aware of the tool's programming capability, but more importantly, I want to share with you how I handle software glitches. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll see how vital it is to have a specialist on your team that will help you get out of situations beyond your capacity. So by the end of this case study, you will learn the following. Where to locate the tire pressure control module on a 2011 BMW E90. Second, how to program the module with the Maxxis Elite. And lastly, I'll share with you how I fix software glitches with my data lodging service application. Okay, so with that, let's jump into this presentation. So in this case study, we have the Maxisys Elite as our product of choice, and the client is Automobile Associates of Canton, Connecticut. Um, as you know, the vehicle is a 2011 BMW, and they have replaced the RDC control module. So the client sent me this email, Hi Kurt, we replaced the RDC unit on the BMW and coded it with our Maxisys Elite. The tool recognizes it, but we can't see the VIN that's in it but we get a hard fault of a 64D. Do you think we're missing a step? Thanks, Scott. So my goal was to identify what's causing the hard fault by analyzing the software on the tablet and if there's any problems with the component that they replace it with. I'm able to, to get both of that information with the data lodging. So this is a diagram of all the control modules on the vehicle. I know it's a lot and you know this is what we're going to be faced up with but what I really want to show you is where this RDC control module is. And if you look at number 45, you'll see that it's right behind the rear seats. Right? Um, just to give you a better idea, here's a little uh, inside look that I was able to find. Okay, you can see it's right there. All right, so th this is something that I always encourage people to get. It's, it's really worth the money. Get repair information, you know. Uh, yeah, you can find stuff on Google, but if you are not, let's say, able to speak Google and not able to know the exact keywords to find the information, you could waste a lot of time, right? Whereas if you have the right repair information, it just gets you straight to the point. All right. So as you can see here, I'm already into my client's device. And the first thing I'm going to do is locate the RDC tire pressure control option and then click all the check boxes along the right and press OK. From here, it's going to give me a summary of the vehicle, the calibration file, and below the time estimated to download the calibration file. On the lower right, I'm just going to click Execute Measurement Plan. And from there, just follow the prompts. Press OK. And what's going to happen now is the uh, software is going to log on to Altel's uh, backend servers to download the calibration file. All right, this one was very quick. Press OK. You can see, guys, it's really simple. I tell people if you have a finger and if you can read, you can do programming. Turn off the engine, then turn it back on, press OK. Alright, so this screen says in order to successfully complete the initialization, we need to drive the vehicle for at least 10 minutes with a driving speed of 25 kilometers per hour. So that's about maybe 15 miles per hour. So at this point, that's when I instructed my uh, client to uh, go ahead and follow the instructions. And he left the tablet in the vehicle while he was doing this. And then when he came back, we were able to finish the programming procedure, which I'm going to show you on the next slide. So now that the driving parameters have been met, we can start initializing the programming procedure by, by clicking OK. 
And while this is doing its thing, I just want to give you guys something cognitively to digest. Some of you right now who are watching this video might be already experiencing complex coding and programming issues that your current scan tool cannot resolve. And making this transition from some of you being mechanical to the electrical side of things, you need to be aware that the new generation of scan tools have also made a transition from being, you know, basic one-dimensional code readers to, you know, diagnostic beasts, coding beasts <laughs> that have a heavy reliability in terms of its software in order to fix problems. Okay. Um, with that being said, it's it's imperative not to believe that you can own this tool and you will not have any issues during the duration of, of ownership. You know, like the first generation of scan tools were, were not as complex and they were very stable. In fact, uh, if to give you an analogy, if you compare it to like a, a car, it's like driving a Toyota with these, these, you know, older diagnostic tools, you know, simple, but yet reliable with the new generation of tools it's like driving a bmw or mercedes the more components you have on it the more uh, higher probability that those components will get damaged and this is a very complicated tool all right so you're going to have technical issues like how to do xyz you know um if you aren't familiar with the platform it might take you a while to validate that those features are there then you're going to get a hardware issues you know, like if your J2534 breaks, which I've showed you in previous videos, if your battery dies, you know, if it implodes or something like that. And um, that's another big thing that you're going to get, you know. Um, and the last is software, you know. So what you're going to see right now, this is a, a, a software glitch. Um, unknown function variant. Please copy the following data or click the snapshot button uh for the image and send it to the seller i gotta get them to fix that but for those of you who are thinking about buying this online or even locally okay if this happened to you the seller who you probably don't know is responsible for you what will they do with this information can you do you know their details where you can pick up the phone and give them this information okay you guys don't think about this and i and i wanted to show you this so you can say okay you know what maybe i do need that support all right so this is what i did i took a picture of the error and i'm going to do what they call a data lodging and i showed you this in my other other videos and for those of you who don't know what data lodging is it basically allows uh, the engineers to analyze the component that was being replaced okay they can see the health of that component and then they can also see if there was a software glitch with the uh, Autel diagnostic software, all right? So once they gather this information, what I do is uh, I submit it, and then I'm going to follow it up for my client. I'm going to show you in the next slide uh, what process I did to get them to uh, make this uh, patch so the client can finish the diagnostic task. Welcome to the data lodging service application. This is where I document and submit all the data lodgings that my clients give to me on a daily and weekly basis. The reason I developed this application was to systemize the follow-up procedure between me, the engineer, and my client. Also, it allows me to elaborate in detail a clear description uh, for the engineers to fundamentally understand what problems that is the client experiencing and I also will attach video for them to review or take picture of the error and annotate it with arrows to bring emphasis on what the problem is um, I know it's hard to read but on the right there's a dialog box between me and the engineer and myself and the client and I took the initiative to also institute communication via Skype to expedite the software and here's a screenshot of the Skype conversation and it basically says, hey, Vivian, I hope you're doing well. Is there a possibility that the interns are working today? 
uh, you have several data logins that I need uh, answers on. And um, just to give you a little background, that week was a, a holiday and um, in, in China. So it was very difficult to get somebody to take action on this because everybody was basically gone, which you can see here. Um, she says that the engineers were gone. But um, later on, she gives me a reply, Kurt, the beta version has been released for BMW. I then immediately phoned my client and uh, informed them that the update has been released and it's ready for him to download. And later he gave me a call and uh, I'll share with you just in a second what he said. But look at the time, guys. It's Saturday, 3 something in the morning. This is the difference between client support and customer support all right there, there's a difference all right i don't normally work on saturdays but i knew the urgency of the matter and you know with my client that's why they they choose to invest in me um to help them do that so i hope you guys can start to see but let me show you what the client said after successfully programming this module box of zero Seven two four two five zero seven two two. At the tone, record your message. Then press hash or hang up. Hi, Curtis Scott from Automobile Associates. We had the BMW RDC unit issue. Uh, I'm just calling to thank you for getting them to update the software. Uh, the coding went perfectly smooth. It went quickly. It fixed the problem, and we appreciate all your help. Thanks again. Take it easy. So guys, I will wrap it up for today. And I really hope that this added value to anybody who's trying to do research on the tool because I know how vague the internet is regarding this tool's capabilities. Um, if you need more information and further would like to purchase the tool, give me a call 844-210-9020 or you can go to my website autotech.co enter your name and email and number and I'll contact you back for a consultation and this way I can really understand your operation whether it be big or small if you work from home or if you're a fleet company and I could just answer all the questions that you're not able to get so with that guys I really appreciate your support and I will see you in the next video take care